Hello, uh, Mr. Buffett and Mr. Munger. My name's Connor. I'm an economic student at the University of Nottingham. My question for you today is during the pandemic, we witnessed supply chain shortages, especially from Asia. As a result, companies have chosen, with political tensions, to move production away. Should companies make these decisions, and should the government support them? Charlie? Well, that's a good question. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, it's logical if you're in business and you can make the thing in Mexico way cheaper. It's natural to open a factory in Mexico and, in Mexico and get, get your parts cheaper, and a lot of the auto manufacturers have done exactly that. On the other hand, nobody wants to hollow out the whole country so all the manufacturing jobs are elsewhere and we're all living like a bunch of farmers, you know, like English colonies in 1820 or something. And, and, and these ideas are, of course, in, in, in big tension. Uh, we have... We don't have that much foreign production, right, Warren? Yeah, well, but we've lost, well, originally Berkshire Hathaway is a textile manufacturer, it lost because the South became feasible versus the North, and of course then eventually. Uh, the South got expensive South compared got, to China. Sure, and, <laughs> and uh, society benefits and some people get killed in that sort of a situation, and a rich society should take care one way or another and of people that worked in our shoe factories, people who worked in our textile companies. I mean, if you worked in our textile operation in, in 1964 when we took it over, half our, half our workers only spoke Portuguese. And... Uh, you know, they, and they weren't getting great wages at all, but now you could do it in the South, and we were doomed to go out of business. And it wasn't the fault of the worker in any way, shape, or form. It wasn't the, our fault. We kept trying to compete. Well, it was a TVA had cheap power down there. Sure. And a, and a textile is really congealed power. And air conditioning changed everything, because the heat in those damn places were impossible. That's a lot of things. But then, then it moves uh, offshore in many ways and, and net the country is better off because of it, but it displaces a lot of people who really can't do something else. In life. You can't talk about retraining somebody that's 55 or 60 and speaks only Portuguese and really tell them they're going to have a great future in New Bedford, Mass. And, you know, and, 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 so you don't want to be glib about it, uh, and we can afford to take care of those people, and we've got some systems that work reasonably well, but, but there's a tension between, you know, what about the person that doesn't do anything and all that kind of stuff. So it, these are not easy problems to solve, but I would say that by and large, we want the whole world to prosper. We do not want to be a world, we don't want the United States to be a country of extraordinary prosperity and have the rest of the world starve in. No, it, 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 it isn't going to work, and it particularly isn't going to work in a nuclear world. So, and you can have your own feelings about it as a humane person, but, but uh, it doesn't, it, 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 it is not, it, it can be done better. And, and we've got the resources to do it. I mean, it, it is, it, the output of this country, what well, can be done with a lot fewer people and, and doing more specialized things. And of course, it has been the work week in the United States, you know, in my lifetime has dropped dramatically. And people still feel busy and every, and it will be the human lot to say, you know, how can I get all these things done? But, but my mother didn't drive free kids any place. I mean, you want to go any place, if you were lucky, and, we got old enough, he had a bicycle. The, the world just keeps looking at everything moving up as becoming sort of a base that leaves them somewhat dissatisfied. And 
with our prosperity, uh, we can do a lot of things we couldn't do in, in 1930, and including taking care of people that get, get displaced by the fact that somebody else can do that work and, and improve their lot in life. And we've got to make sure that we have the best system that takes care of the people who, who get displaced by that. But doing that in a political system we have and everything, we'll make a lot of mistakes along the way, but we've got to keep moving in that direction. And really I say, the interesting thing about it is that the Adam Smith was right, that the, the free market capitalism automatically with a lot of property and private hands and free trade and all that, automatically creates GDP per capita that grows and helps everybody, including the people at the bottom. It helps everybody a lot. But a, inherent in the process, there's a lot of pain in that free market capitalism, for instance, to the Portuguese workers in a textile company in New Bedford. And nobody's ever figured out how to take all the pain out of it. We do have government safety nets to take some of the pain out. And we make those safety nets a little bigger as time goes by. But apart from that, if you try and take all the pain out, you'll also take all the gains out of it. You won't have a growing GDP per capita. You'll have an economy like Russia's, which has been characterized as saying, they pretend to pay us and we pretend to work. Yeah. Yeah, the other systems haven't worked better, but yeah. it also produces more and more disparities in wealth and people that do nothing but get assets under management without actually performing anything extra, make fortunes. And I mean, it, it, it's, it's the job of government to keep the best aspects of capitalism while not causing people that only speak Portuguese to suffer in the process. I mean, the two aren't compatible politically over time, and we stumble along making progress on things like Social Security and all that, and, and we are a lot better off than we are when I was born. Net, the United States has done a very good job of this tension between capitalistic growth and a growing social safety net. We can be pretty proud of our country looking backward. Yeah.